Uh, so I'd like that. I'd like that. Uh, so the, the one case that remains is uh, the case of uh, uh, empirically equivalent uh, but mutually incompatible uh, theories, uh, and incompatible now because they have uh, uh, untrans some untranslatable words. Uh, the line I've vacillated on, question, on these, this question, but the one that I seem to be, have settled down to for some time now uh, is uh, we don't want to say, and here, Davidson would say, well, call them both true. I don't want to do that because truth uh, applies only to a language. I think of Tarski's uh, construction of truth. Uh, it's the uh, sentences that are true. Uh, so that, in that sense, you have to say true for language L. Uh, because the same string of words uh, might uh, have quite another uh, uh, use in another language, uh, that uh, uh, we, we, we can't, uh, 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 we, we, when we do apply truth, the predicate truth to sentences in another language, what we're really saying is our translation of that sentence into our language by our choice of a translation manual uh, is true. Uh, but uh, uh, in this case of these, uh, of, uh, these two competing uh, theories, uh, the one language is not translatable into the other. Therefore, our truth concept does not extend to it. And the way we can uh, 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 absorb that situation, accommodate it, uh, is to say, well, those sentences with those odd terms in it are meaningless. We can't say whether they're true or false. They're meaningless. It doesn't apply. Our, our truth predicate doesn't apply. We have no translation. So that's the way I leave it, that uh, when, when the situation has been reduced, as we can reduce it, just to that case uh, uh, that has the alien terms in it, um, say, well, it's, uh, uh, we, we can still see, perhaps, by some indirect methods, uh, that the, uh, uh, the empirical, uh, uh, the, the, the relation to, to Observation sentences are the same. They're empirically equivalent. Uh, uh, and so we can yes, well, that's good theory. That's just as warranted, apparently, as our theory is. Uh, but uh, we can't say it's true because it's, 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 it's meaningless. It's got this uh, uh, gibberish in it. Uh, and we can say that and still, uh, having satisfied ourselves of the empirical equivalence, uh, go over into the other theory uh, uh, when we please and pursue that theory for the further enrichment, a further perspective on reality that it's giving us. Uh, and then, of course, as long as we're over there, uh, we're saying, sure, that's true. This other theory that we just left uh, uh, behind uh, is the one that's meaningless. But it's true for uh, L prime, not true for L. Uh, let me see if I understand the answer. Um, We have the two theory formulations. They're empirically equivalent. They're not intertranslatable. We have removed any syntactic inconsistency by changing terms. Um, we don't want to just think of them as both in our language, conjoin them and as it were, believe the conjunction, because then we would have a theory that's too bloated and too... That's uh, right, right. data economy. But. So we have to make some... Uh, so we must make some choice between them. Now, we can think of them as theories formulated in different languages. Is this what you're saying? Then we can perhaps arbitrarily decide to use one of the languages, that is, one of the theories. And from that perspective, the theory formulation in the other language, um, well, perhaps we shouldn't say that it's meaningless. It has a meaning in this other language that we can't yeah. translate. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think I... So what's, sa what's saving the situation, as I see it, is that uh, truth, since it's since I'm taking truth following Tarski as uh, an attribute of sentences, yeah. uh, uh, is necessarily relative to a language. Yes. 
Uh, and uh, uh, that hasn't persuaded Davidson, but it seems to me to stand up. Yes. I mean, there's a, let me ask you a final question on under determination to take us back to what we were talking about before. Do you think of the um, skeptical hypotheses, such as the hypothesis that we're dreaming or the hypothesis that we're brains in the, in the vat, um, as um, Would you, would you assimilate the problem of deciding whether such hypotheses are true rather than the common sense hypothesis to the problem of underdetermination? Are these examples of hypotheses that would that purport to explain the data, namely the facts of our experience, just as well as the hypothesis, the common sense hypothesis that we are awake and living in a real physical world? I think we'd find a, uh, uh, a basis for choice uh, in terms of uh, simplicity and economy of theory. One of the main concerns of traditional epistemology has been to solve the problem first posed by David Hume. What reason do we have to make the assumption that the future will resemble the past? And uh, this Yes. It appears to be a very important assumption that we make. It seems to presuppose a lot of our activity in everyday life as well as uh, in scientific research. And it certainly would be nice, perhaps, and very important to, to find a justification for making that assumption. Um, but on this issue, you have written, and I quote, the Humean predicament is the human predicament. Uh, what do you have in mind? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I, 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 uh, I don't think uh, uh, it can be done. Uh, the, a, a, uh, uh, logical justification of uh, 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 the principle of induction is possible. Uh, the, uh, but uh, at the same time, nothing could be more fundamental uh, to science and uh, to everyday life uh, than uh, induction. Uh, in, in, in its most primitive form, it uh, uh, governs. Uh, animals generally, at least the higher ones, uh, uh, and it's the basis of habit formation. Uh, it's uh, our, our innate standard of similarity, which uh, underlies our, uh, all our habit formation and expectation, namely uh, expecting that uh, uh, a, uh, <coughs> sens uh, a sensory experience uh, uh, similar by our lights, our similarity standards, to an earlier one will have a sequel uh, similar to the sequel of the earlier one. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, there, there, there's a, the, the basic principle, as I think of it, of, of induction, uh, and uh, uh, and it's the, it's the basis of expectation. Uh, so we we wouldn't be uh, uh, getting anywhere, even uh, 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 learning the beginnings of uh, uh, language. Uh, or learning how, how to get around, uh, if it, if we uh, uh, we wouldn't have any conditioned conditioned responses, uh, if it weren't for that. So that's fundamental. Uh, and uh, uh, then, uh, the from a naturalistic point of view, there is still the question, however, uh, not right, uh, not not uh, of, of justification, uh, except after the fact. Why is it that it works so well? Because we're certainly doing a fine job of, uh, I mean, our expectations come out so much, uh, and similarly for other animals, uh, uh, so much more uh, 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 successfully than random. Uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, surely, is to be explained by our standards of similarity, subjective similarity, uh, of which, uh, which underlie uh, this basic form of induction. Uh, and our standards of similarity in that sense, the things that we respond simil similarly to, uh, uh, have the same response to th these presentations, similar in that sense. That standard of similarity uh, is uh, in, uh, instilled in us by natural selection down the generations. Uh, uh, its survival value 
uh, lies in the fact that uh, it does correspond to the trends in nature, at least the trends in nature up to that time that have been affecting us, uh, so that our expectations are fulfilled uh, so much more often than not. Uh, and uh, there, that, therefore, is the uh, ex post facto uh, uh, explanation of why induction works. It's not a justification of induction. Uh, that would be a, a vicious circle. Uh, but it explains why it's worked up to now. It gives us no assurance uh, that it's going to go on working. There could be an abrupt uh, uh, change in the affairs of the world. Uh, uh, but we expect it is going to go on working. For the same reason, we're applying our same old uh, uh, pattern of expectation, expecting the past to uh, expecting the past to be uh, pretty much reproduced in the future.